Biden's just 30 days in. And he's already so much better than Trump. Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America. Well, <laughs> I was like, where's the clap? <laughs> as we said, Mr. Biden is uh, not 30 days into his uh, presidency or his regime, depending on uh, who you ask. And uh, we wake up to the following. <clears throat> Under President Biden's direction, U.S. military forces earlier this evening conducted airstrikes against infrastructure utilized by Iranian-backed militant groups in eastern Syria, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby said in a statement. These strikes were authorized in response to recent attacks against American and coalition personnel in Iraq and to ongoing threats to those personnel, he added. Specifically, the strikes destroyed multiple facilities located at a border control point used by a number of Iranian-backed militant groups, including Qaitib Hezbollah and Qaitib Said al-Shohada, he added, end quote. Okay. Uh, now, according to... Um, here's Al Jazeera. At least 17 pro-Iran fighters are reported to have been killed in strikes, which Pentagon says was in response to recent rocket attacks on U.S. troops in Iraq. Okay? Okay. So, Mr. Biden is not 30 days in, and already uh, he's beating the war drums. Now, this is one of the things that I said. I said one time in a live stream, I said, uh, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with Trump uh, being nominated for a Nobel Prize. People laughed at me and I said, because he kept us out of war. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow, he's only 30 days in. Don't you remember wow. Mr. Mr. Trump was trying to get us out of Afghanistan? And uh, the left uh, or... And when or... He, Trump first came in, weren't we like almost like on a war or something with China? There was like a big, it was a big problem, right? Well, we always have a problem with China. The, the thing is, in 2016, a lot of people forget this. Miss Clinton was talking about uh, enforcing very restrictive airspace issues with Russia over Syria. Okay. Which, have, which would have almost certainly mm -hmm. instigated some sort of war mm -hmm. with uh, the Russians. And um, what's really interesting about that is, is that... Uh, you know, when this whole Russia conspiracy stuff, I always ask people, why do you think the Russians would have wanted Trump versus Clinton? Mm -hmm. It's because Trump was saying, we need to talk to Putin. And she was saying, let's restrict the airspace mm -hmm. and doing the war. But now you remember, Mrs. Hillary Rodham, we came, we saw, we killed him, Clinton. And all the war hawking she was doing. And this was a major, major concern of mine, mm -hmm. aside from Biden's racist uh, policies that, that have actually resulted in the destruction of African people, um, uh, which, you know, nobody to this moment can name me a single Trump policy that has been deleterious and destructive to black people. Um, this was the other thing I was worried about. The left... A policy? Oh, yeah. Policy. Yeah. The le you know, like shit that actually affects people. The, the Democratic Party... Has, I mean, he said has things switched. that that affected your people. Like what? As well, president? Yeah. Like what? Like the way that he was going after certain people, but not going after certain other people. Like the you know calling them sons of bitches for for kneeling, and you know the different people that were going that were like busting into. That doesn't, the, that doesn't really affect my life, but call, well, it he does. Call, Colin in Kaepernick the, a son of a bitch. It does in care. the sense that he has that sort of attitude about it, and then a lot of people that had you know latent racism in their hearts. That started okay. coming out when they felt like it was okay. Yeah, I don't. And when you I don't, heard what that lady said, we're gonna, we're gonna. What did she say? Like lady. we're gonna get another. We're gonna get someone worse than Trump. And <laughs> if you don't white, stop, yeah, little white lady was was upset. Yeah, yeah, but but uh, but. So how, as, how does that affect policy, me? How does how does him calling Colin Ka Kaepernick a son of a bitch? How does that affect me? Well, I think that his attitude increased the amount of black deaths. How? What do you mean? How can you make a correlation with that? Because the way that didn't it increase during his presidency? What do you mean? What do you mean? Let me ask I you mean? a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. It well, maybe Dorian, I was just more aware of Dorian, it. Dorian, Dorian, Dorian has to walk uh, a mile down a block, right? Yep. I got two blocks for you. One is Alabama. One is Chicago. Okay, I put him in Alabama. Correct. 
That's my point. My point is, uh, I don't view racists being emboldened to be racist as negative. Because that tells me, okay, this is where you are. This is great. So I've always said I love my racist to be explicit. So the fact that Trump emboldened racist people to identify themselves. No, embolden them to say me. it, fine, but not embolden them to, I mean, was that like a normal thing? Like they just shot that guy in the street and then they were calling him names. Like, you mean the cops? No, the, those two guys, when that the guy was running. Yeah, I don't think that has anything to do with Trump. I think that has to do with the fact that they- I feel like they, people felt they, like they were more okay to do stuff like that during Trump's so, reign. So black people weren't getting shot up by people the real issue is that the DA refused to prosecute. Like I said, maybe I just noticed it more during his presidency because our, our boys are getting older. I don't really know. Well, you know it more it because the media was making some big giant uh, hullabaloo about Trump's mm. supposed racism when all he was doing was telling Il Ilhan to go back to Somalia on Twitter. Yeah, but I didn't think that that was racist. She said go back and then come back when you... Well, well yeah, but... Uh, I mean, yeah, we're, we're getting away from the point here. My, my, what I'm worried about, what I was worried about was war. Now, when Mr. Trump was pulling folks out of Syria, mm -hmm. all the Democrats got angry. Don't you guys remember? Oh, you're leaving the Kurds to, to genocide. I had a good friend of mine. They're going to get genocided, Vin. You don't care. I screenshot. I sc <laughs> hey, hey, I screenshotted that. But I love the brother, so I'm not going to say it. But he was talking about how the Kurds were going to get uh, genocided because we pulled 23 troops out of, out of Syria. The Democrats and the leftists were angry at Trump for that. Trump said, let's get everybody home from Afghanistan. The Democrats and the left, they were angry about that too. They're, they're upset about it. It's very strange. You know, during the Iraq invasion, the, the people who were rightly against war and aggression after, you know, they all voted for it were the Democrats. Mm -hmm. and specific, not necessarily, Dem but left-wing people. We're saying this is horrible, this is a terrible war, yeah. this is bad information, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but now all of a sudden, in the last couple of years, they've completely switched the other way. So now Trump says, hey, let's get our guys out of Afghanistan. There's no real U.S. interest in Afghanistan. Nope, nope. The Democrats wanted to keep them there. Hey, let's get guys out of Syria. Nope, nope. Keep them in Syria. We're going to avoid a genocide, which is an obvious lie. There was no genocide in Syria after the U.S. troops pulled out. And uh, all and these twenty three people, people can stop all, whole genocide. All it's these crazy. All these all these silly talking heads. Not you, my friend. Uh, you were just caught up in a moment of passion. But all these silly talking heads in the media that were talking about how we betrayed the Kurds and left them to be genocided uh, were completely silent when the supposed genocide didn't happen. Now, of course, we did a documentary on that, and we showed that that was uh, all a lie, and that uh, the real concern. For the Kurdish normal person in Syria was not Syrian forces, but the YPG and the terrorists in the YPG who were forcibly recruiting people against their will and killing them for resisting. Which is why there were over 100,000 refugees from Kurdish Syria into uh, Turkey <laughs> fleeing from those people. But... Ah, who cares? Who cares about truth and deal? Who care about that? This is a very strange thing where the, the, the Democratic Party has now, the Blue Party has actually become the Red Party, which is a party of blood and mostly uh, brown people overseas, but these are people who care about other people. Okay. So what do you think of this? They, they just killed, they, here we go. We're starting to, the, their justification is, come on, man, they're, uh, they, they went after us. This kind of reminds me of, uh, during um, Ob Obama's time, like mm -hmm. pe random people were just getting blown up. <laughs> yeah, Anwar al was, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, who are these people? Kaita Hezbollah and Kaita Sayyid al Shahada. Sayyid al Shahada was uh, uh, Muhammad's uncle. He was killed. And you remember that horrible story where he and uh, she ate his liver and desecrated his body and all this stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so when Muhammad finally found him, it was his favorite uncle. He said, you're going to be the Sayyid al-Shahada. Sayyid al-Shahada means like the, the, the prince of the martyrs, basically. So so these are uh, Shia organizations. What was Sayyid al-Shahada doing, uh, let's say, three or four years ago? Do you know what Sayyid al-Shahada was doing three or four years ago? Oh, let me help you. Let me help you. This is them in close combat with the Islamic State. Oh. That was 2 March 2015. Do you know why? 
The Islamic State is a radical Sunni group, and groups like Hezbollah and groups like uh, Sayyid al shahada et cetera, et cetera, were fighting them. And so we were actually fighting alongside these guys, oh, right? Okay. So our, our dev group guys, Delta guys, were fighting alongside these guys to push back the, uh, the ISIS. Okay, yeah. Okay? Are these the people that we just shot up? These are the people we just bombed. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. These are the people that we just bombed to smithereens, 17 of them. Now, oh. now uh, Biden's justification is, well, they attacked us. Well, why would they be attacking us, Mr. Biden? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because, oh, that's right. <laughs> the Iraqi parliament, as of 5 January, that's last year, they voted to kick us out. After the entire Soleimani affair, you remember Soleimani, where Mr. Soleimani, uh, we we attacked oh. yeah, yeah, the Italian general and all, yeah. and the Iranian general, and the rest of it. And the Iraqis were like, "Okay, these are Americans, you wait, guys." Is that the one? Wait a minute, maybe I'm getting confused. Is that the guy that they kind of chopped him up and he came out? No, 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 no. no. Okay, wait. So tell me again what it is. So Soleimani was a general in Iran. I mean, he was a righteous kid. I mean, he he was. We had beef with him for years, and yeah. he killed a bunch of us during the whole Iraqi freedom situation. Mm -hmm. And him and his guy were driving, and we found him, and so we 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 killed him. And we made sure he had. So already, after that, they wanted us out. They said, "All right, you guys are way too much trouble than what you're worth." Okay. And so they said, "Last year, get out of our country." And that oh. was that was Jan five oh. January twenty twenty. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's now what twenty six, twenty seven February twenty twenty one. It's been a year ago when you're at somebody's house. <laughs> you have overstayed your welcome. And they say, thank you for coming. But ever since you've been here, you've killed 19 people in this house, which is a lie. We've killed close to a million of them. You've killed 19 people in this house and our oil seems to be missing. Please leave. Don't you remember Mr. Trump? He said, after killing Baghdadi, he said, well, I mean, uh, we should take the oil for ourselves. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time and money here. Don't you remember that? So they said, we want you out of here because you just killed this guy and you're stirring up this hornet's nest. Get out. They voted and we're still there. The nerve of these people attacking troops from a country that does not belong there at all who have been told, you know, we set up, I remember when we set this up and there was a big thing where the girl had the little black thing on her hand showing that she voted and people were crying, oh my God, we brought democracy to Iraq. Look at these Iraqi people voting. This is such an emotional moment. Yeah. So the democratically elected parliament said, get the hell out of Iraq. That was a year ago. We're still here, still over there. Still in Afghanistan, by the way. The nerve! Well, why did they wait a year before killing any of our troops? Well, they didn't kill any of our troops. They mean? shot some rockets over where our troops were. They didn't kill anybody. Oh, they didn't even kill anybody. No, it's yeah, the same. Yeah, but why did they wait a year? It's the like same. What, what? Because we are a we're the lone superpower on the planet. Yeah, and I know. People but are like, terrified of dealing with us. What That's was the why. straw that broke the camel's back where they said, "You know what? Let's send something else." I don't know. It's been a year. I have no idea. I'm sure there was something else going on that we don't know about right well, now. Well. That's my point. My point is, we've got troops in Afghanistan killing civilians. We've got troops in Syria killing civilians. We went to Yemen at the beginning of the Trump administration and finished off Anwar al awliki's family. We killed him. He was a U.S. citizen, by the way. We killed him extrajudiciously. Didn't bring him into court. We just killed him over there. And then, then we killed Abdul Rahman, his son, the 16-year-old. That was Obama. Obama took out the father and the son. And then Mr. Mr. Trump authorized a raid that killed Awliki's five-year-old daughter. So you're like passing the baton on murdering all these people in this area. Is this the same place where Trump was saying <clears throat> we weren't going to come out of there until they they like paid us for the airport, well, basically, or something? Where well, they're... this is this is what I'm talking about. Where Trump's like, well, we're going to take we're going to take some of these resources and we'll let them buy the oil back. But I mean, he. But this is the thing I loved about Trump. He was just explicit about hey, <laughs> what he was doing. This is this is what I'm about. Yikes. Screw you, people. I'm taking all your shit. Yikes. Run that. That's what we used to say in the hood. Run that. Oh, my gosh. This five-year-old. That's awful. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Gosh. We put a hole in the back of her head. 
and her her cousin got to see that as she was running for her life. That's a, that's true. And the only thing that Trump brought up in his State of the Union is a Devru guy. Rest in peace. Is a Devru guy that died in the in the raid, and so his wife got stood up and blah 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 blah. But we almost eliminated Aliki's entire family. But fuck him, fuck him. Uh, so look, um, look, uh, am I surprised that Mr. Biden did this? No. Um, but you know, I, I posted something in the, in the middle America forum. If you want to join dear listener, facebook.com backslash America middle. If you want to actually be on the forum with us, we've got, we've got some cool options coming for you guys on Patreon. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a different layout here. Things are a little bit. We're getting a little bit technical, yeah, huh? We're moving up in the world. Uh, we're trying to make the channel a lot more interactive, guys. Um, we're going to have live uh, live streams for patrons whole nine yards. It's going to be really, really cool. But, um, uh, guys, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, here we are. Here we are. Um, he, you know, we're, we're just now reporting on all, all, all these issues. And, and I already know what's going to happen in the comment section. Listen very closely to me. I've said over and over again. For the most part, I have to caveat this. I don't care what Trump says. I care about policy. Now, after the events in 6 January, I've had to amend that and say, holy shit, a guy like Trump shouldn't be on Twitter or any no, yeah, platform yeah. where he can meet, reach 100 million people or whatever. He had 88 mm -hmm. million followers. And if you figure that each family has at least one other person in the house, this guy had a reach of 100 to 200 million people. OK, so um, so from that perspective, as far as him being able to gin up people's uh, emotions and things like that and then channel that energy into horrible situations. Absolutely. But for the most part, Trump's policies are superior in four years to Biden's in 40 years. And I've been telling you guys. This is the guy that was presiding over the mass deportations where Mr. Obama got called the porter in chief. He was the VP when uh, Obama got the title drone king, where he droned more people in four years than Bush did in eight. He was there. He was telling the Mexican dude, he was the one that was the vice president when the cages for the human beings were being built. And then when the Mexican dude confronted him on it, he said, go vote for... Go vote for Trump then Ugh. with his racist self. That was Biden. Biden was there when we got lied into Iraq and Biden was there with the Edward, uh, Edward Snowden and the Chelsea Manning torture, but Biden was there for all of it. And now we still have kids in these facilities. No. They're not cages anymore. They're facilities. And now oh, their parents, uh, uh no, I will say though there is a lawyer that just published a report. Yeah, 150, 100 150 yeah. of these parents got reunited with their kids. It's um, like part of you is like yay, and then there's another part of you that's like horrified that you're saying yay to something. So, like correct. the fact that they're Basic, brought to them together correct. means that they were separated, and correct. that's just absolutely like I, as a mom, can't even imagine being separated from my kids. I feel like I'd freaking lose my mind. Right, like. Well, and they're in the hands of other people. You well, know? Not, and to then, not to and mention then the sexual hear, assault. That's what was happening. When you hear that, it's like, holy moly. Yeah, not to mention wow. the sexual assault. Um, but here we are, ladies and gents. Ugh. Look, man, I, I don't care about Biden versus Trump. I'm not a Republican. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not. I'm a guy who does not care what you call yourself. I watch what you do. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I yeah. watch what you do. Who's nicer to people on Twitter? Who, uh, uh, Biden, on Twitter, he wasn't nice to that Mexican fella he told to go vote for uh, uh, Trump. He wasn't nice to him. He wasn't nice to Charlemagne the God when Charlemagne said, what are you going to do for my folks? He said, oh, yeah. What do you say? Yeah, you ain't black. You ain't black. <laughs> if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Who, who was more classy on Twitter between uh, uh, Obama versus Trump? Has there ever been a guy with more class and more sauce then Obama, yeah, Obama was saucy as literal hell as he was bombing the shit out of those Afghani kids. Very classy, but very saucy. Uh. Now you watch. You watch what happens in the comment sections. 
You watch the justifications that are about to happen for this bullshit saber rattling that Mr. Biden did in the first 30 days of his presidency. You watch. And all the people for the last four years that have been talking about this whataboutism, you know what whataboutism is, don't you? No. It is a, a new word that was invented by a certain group of people in the last four years so that they could circumvent um, oh, the, the charge of hypocrisy. Be. So when they're brought with something, they say, yeah, but what about this? Like, that is what you're saying? Right, and they're yeah. saying, oh, that's whataboutism. Let's not talk about that. So when you when they go, oh my God, Trump put people in cages, and you go, yeah, but Obama built the cages. They go, that's what about it? Oh my gosh! <laughs> you watch what happens in the comment section. Uh, okay. They're gonna say, well, there's other things uh, uh, Biden did. How come you're reporting on this? Because 17 people died, and more could possibly die. When Mr. Trump killed Soleimani, I shot two or three videos on it. When those poor people died in the plane crash afterward, I shot a video and went after Trump. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Biden is a moral monster. He's a horrifically evil moral monster. And no, he's not equal to Trump because he's been a moral monster for 40 fucking years. Trump is, 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 can't hold a candle to the degree of evil that this, this guy has been responsible for unleash, unleashing yeah. uh, on foreign and domestic soil. And this is just the beginning. You watch. You watch. What were those documents he was signing right away when he got in? Do you know? None of us know. Yeah, no, no, no. We all, I mean, it's the executive orders and the Republicans are going crazy. Oh my God, this is, this is fascism, blah, blah, blah. They're throwing out all these exaggerated, you know, silly, you know, whatever. Um, but they're but they're not mad about these seventeen dead people. And, and and again, people people seem to think like, oh, if it's if you're not killing if you're not killing a civilian, then it's okay. Wrong. Like, let me give you an example. If you go, if you break into somebody's house at nine thirty p.m., everybody's asleep, right? And the guy and and you've got like extensive military training. And a guy comes downstairs with his little with his little twenty two, right? And you you break down the door with your door kickers and you put five bullets in his head, right? Everybody on the planet would say you killed an innocent man, you horrible person, blah blah blah. Doesn't matter if he was armed. You are the aggressor. You are the intruder. Mm -hmm. So when you kill that guy, even if the guy was armed, people would say, well, yeah, the guy was armed. You broke into his house. This is this is this is what's happening overseas. So no, they didn't kill 17 civilians at, that we know of, but the people that they killed were people that were saying, "Get out of our house." Right. We told you guys a year ago, "Get out of our house." I mean, it it seems that it's just certain groups of people that were okay with that happening. With I mean, Breonna Taylor, that's what happened, right? I mean, unless yeah, there's black, more information that I don't know about, well, like well, he crashed into her apartment. Well, well, look. Uh, the vast majority of white people don't care about Breonna Taylor because right. they don't see their daughter in that situation. Right. And newsflash, the vast majority of black people don't give a fuck about those people in Afghanistan that got drone bombed at a wedding where the husband had to collect his, wife, his wife's head and her leg and had to identify her by her missing tooth, had to bring the head to the dad. Black people don't give a fuck about that. Who cares? So it's all these things where if it doesn't affect us, then eh, and we just move on with our day. Yeah, I said it. It's true. Black people, you selfish as hell, bro. And you're also very silly and easy to manipulate. But we'll talk about that another time. When Mr. B <laughs> you wait. Till Are you crying? Oh, I'm sorry. Man. You wait. You wait. Anyway. Hell of a way to, to introduce yourself to the world, President Biden. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, we as Americans have blood on our hands. Uh, yeah, we do. You can't sit there and get teary-eyed when the national anthem plays in the Olympics. But now after we kill all these people, you can't say, well, I didn't do that. I'm an individualist. But then during the Olympics, you're a collectivist. Wrong. We should celebrate when the flag goes up in the Olympics. And we should also 
collectively repent because we now have more blood on our hands, courtesy of Mr. Joe Biden and the 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 folks who voted for him. Which I can't really blame them because we're in a duopoly and what can you do? Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Till next time, guys. Oh!